All right, so not only do you need your review packet, but your notebook as well. If you are a person who takes notes to the point where we are able to see the label of our sections, can you go back and find in your notes section 8.4? It would simply be labeled special products. Okay? If that's you. If that's not you, then I, you don't need to tell me that's you. All right, we just need to, it's something you would want to reference today. So that's why I'm, I'm, I'm saying that to you. Yeah, clearly. So again, if you're somebody that's not you, I, I don't need you to tell me that. I just like, okay. So in section 8.4, we covered two ideas. How to take a perfect square. So something like this. If you had a binomial, let's say x plus 6 squared. We talked about how you could get an answer to that without having to write it twice and foiling it. Can anybody look at that right now and tell me what the fat or the uh, multiplied answer out would look like? You know what it is? 8 plus 6. No. 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 <laughs> Destiny? Correct. What would it look like if I then, without writing it twice and without foiling it, could you tell me what that answer would look like? Oh, x squared and x, x squared. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Ruby? x squared plus 12x plus 36. Okay. It would be x squared plus 12x plus 36. Okay. If we had to write this twice... the x squared coming from the first terms. The outers were 6x. The inners were 6x. That's where the 12 came from. And then the L, the last part, 6 times 6, 36. Okay? So that those were the things that we were doing in section 8.4. Remember, the whole first part of this chapter was the multiplication of those polynomials together whether it was through the distributive property or whether it was foiling, whatever the method was. Okay. Today, we're going to be looking at it from that side of things and saying, if I recognize this to be a perfect square, then I should know what my answer is without having to go through one of the factoring methods to get there. So we'll talk about what's important for that to take place. In your review packet, there are things at the top. It says we can use the perfect square um, when, and then there's two blanks up there. We'll talk about what those two blanks need to be in order for that to happen. And if we recognize that we're looking at a perfect square, we should be able to come up with an answer without having to go through the whole factoring process. Does that make sense? So that's our goal. That is what section 8.8 eight is covering. Section 8.9 is covering the difference of two squares, which was the second thing that we did in 8.4. So instead of doing them in two parts, we're going to do them together in one. So that's why I kind of just gave this its own title for today, and I lumped those two sections together. You with me? Okay, so that's, that's where we're headed. Everything we look at today, though, is going to revolve around perfect squares. So we better make sure we know what perfect squares look like, whether they be numbers or variables or the product of those two things together. So as the, if you look at these eight items up here, do you see any that you would consider to be a perfect square? And remember, a perfect square has two identical factors that make it up. So I don't care which one you're looking at first. Give me one that you either say, yes, it is, or no, it's not. Number, so 64? Yeah. Okay, so you're saying that's a yes? Okay, well, why are you thinking yes? Eight. Right, 8 times 8. So if it has an identical factor, it's a perfect square. So 36, yeah. so 36 would be a yes. Okay. And we don't have to go in order. If you see one that you would say yes, it works, or no, it doesn't. Is or is not? Is. How come? Sure. X times X would be X squared. So an identical factor makes it a perfect square. What do you got? 45 is a no? Okay. Destiny, what are you thinking? Uh, is a no? Why are you saying that? Uh, 
Okay. What? I think why are they pissed? Why are you saying yes? Because if you have like okay, say if you get eight twos and then you multiply them to two, it's gonna end up with like if you multiply it down to it, there's only two of them left, so like two times two and then two times two, it's gonna give you the same thing. Yeah, but we don't have a two here. We're talking about bases of y. Over here for so x yeah. squared, you told me it was just an x times an x. That's how I got x squared. Yeah, but if it's, I thought if it's an x times an x. Ah, x now you're getting into something that makes sense. What did you just say? An even exponent. That's that's huge when you talk about perfect squares. I can split y to the eighth into two identical things. Y to the fourth and another y to the fourth. So... That's a yes. Anything that's even, I can split in half. That one's going to be a yes? How come? Because 7 you can do 7 times 7, so you get 49. Good. 5 times 2, so you get 10. Hold on. You said 7 times 7 would give me the 49. Can you split P to the 10th in half? Yeah. With what? P to the 5th and another... P to the fifth. So the fact that I can make those two the same. All right. I like it. That's a yes. We got two left. Yays or nays? What do you got, Smacks? How come? Into what? Into what? Good. So you can split the four into a two, the x to the third, or x to the sixth, excuse me, into a third and a third. Perfect. So what about number seven? No, why not, AJ? Can't split what can't be split evenly? Good. That odd power cannot be split evenly. Very good. So as I look down this list, okay, we correctly identified those as no's and everything else to be a yes. All right. So if you want to talk about having perfect squares, you better be able to know what they what they're going to look like. All right. So actually, in my opinion, the variables are easier than the numbers. Because what do you really only need to focus on with a variable to see whether it's a perfect square or not? Um, I'm a little more elementary in my thought process than that. If it's an even exponent or an odd, right? If it's an even, I can split it in half. If it's an odd, I can't, right? The numbers, the coefficients, 64, 36, 4, 49, I have to know those factors, but with a variable, it's literally as simple as you're looking at an even number or an odd number, and you got it, okay? Before we get too far into this, thinking along those lines of those perfect squares, can you give me any of these multiplications here without having to FOIL? I know we did that one at the beginning a second ago. Maybe that kind of jogs some of your memories. John, you think you got one? The first one. What do you think it is? Uh, x to the second plus 4x plus 4x plus what, 8. Not 8. 16. So why don't you clean that up for me? Instead of x squared, 4x, 4x, and 16, couldn't I call it? Uh, x squared plus 8x plus 16. Very good. That'll work for the first one. You got another one? Okay. Y squared. 14 plus four. Y yeah, yeah, <laughs> plus 49. Okay. Two for two. Obviously we'll leave that last one because it looks the easiest. You think you have that one? I don't know. Two X squared. It's not going to be two A squared. Four A squared. Four A squared. Yeah. You're plus nines, right? Emily, you know what that middle number would be? Oh. A 12A. Very good. Well, if you thought about having this twice, you'd have a 2 and a 3. That would give you a 6. But then you'd have another 2 and a 3. Just like, John, your first one, you had a, a 4X and another 4X. So here, if I put those together, that's already 6. But i got to do that 6 twice. Okay. We're going to use these three right here to hopefully answer 
these two questions right here. Okay. So when you're, what's that? You can't see the questions. There is no question. That's the answer underneath there. Smart guy. All right. So we're, we're going to try to answer those, but I want to do them based off of these three things right here. There is something that is common in this entire front and back to every one of these. So X squared, Y squared, 4A squared, 16, 49, 9, they're all what? They're all what? They're all perfect squares. When you're looking for a perfect square trinomial, the very first thing is that the beginning and the end have to be perfect squares. Okay, that is a requirement of a perfect square trinomial. They must have perfect squares in both the beginning and the end. Now, a perfect square trinomial has three parts, all right? That beginning, the middle, and the end. We have currently said that the beginning and the end both have to be perfect squares. There's only one thing we haven't talked about. What's the only thing we haven't talked about? The middle. And we have one more statement here. So that statement's going to have to do something with the middle. How was the middle created in each one of these sets? So if we come back here and look at their factored answers over here, where, where did the middle come from? Where did the eight come from in the first one? A 4X and another 4X. We doubled the 4X. Where did the 14 come from in this one? The 7Y, and then we doubled it. Where did the 12 come from? So this right here was a total of six, and we doubled it. What's that? You had to add another Correct. You had to add another one to it, right? So here, if we're going to have a perfect square, this second piece is going to have to be basically whatever's in the first spot. We'll call, we called it A. Whatever's in the second spot, we call it B, and we have to double it. We have to multiply it by two. If you would go back and look at your notes from section 8-4, you would see a statement in there that looked like these two things right here that are in yellow. A squared plus 2AB plus B squared and A squared minus 2AB plus B squared. Do you have those in your notes from section 8-4? Can you go back and find them? Yeah, yeah right, Smegs. Why are you lying to me? Yeah, that's where you take all your notes. You know what he said? Okay. I asked him in uh, history if he did his homework. He said no. Like, I don't, he said, well, I'm going to ace the test so it doesn't matter. Ooh. Hope you're right. Look okay. The way around right. Me. <laughs> so if you recognize that your trinomial has a perfect square in the beginning and it has a perfect square in the end and the middle is one of each of those doubled, it's a guarantee that your answer will come out in the form A plus B quantity squared. Like that grouping will be squared, okay? You don't have to factor it. You don't have to use the ACB method. You don't have to use what multiplies to C that adds to B. If those two statements are true, it starts and ends with a perfect square, and the middle is made up of one of each of them doubled, Guaranteed that that's what it's going to look like. Okay. Now, what if your middle is a negative instead of a positive? What do you think it's going to look like over here underneath that box? So it's just going to be A minus B. Okay. So we're going to look at a couple. This doesn't work for every single problem you see. They have to fit the form. If they do, Great. If they don't, then we have to go and use a different method. We have to find the greatest common factor. Or we have to use the factorable trinomial on page five, or we have to use ACB. We'll have to do something else. But if it works, then we can kind of get one for free, so to speak. Okay. So let's come back over here. Let's take a look at this here. 
So here's the first one we're going to look at. Now that's big. What method right now would solve that? If it has a number in front of the squared. ACB, a, right? But we're going to check to see if this is a perfect square. The requirements for a perfect square are two things. What's the first requirement? Okay. Is 81x squared a perfect square? Yes. Yes, it is. Is 25 a perfect square? Yeah. Okay. So right now it's, it's check the first box. The second box. If you take the square root of this one, that would be 9x. If you take the square root of this one, that is 5. If you multiply those together and you double it, so that 2ab... Do you get the middle term? Yeah. Then that means the answer to this is 9x plus 5 squared. Okay? Now, I'm going to ACB it for you here in one second just to prove to you how the two are related. But if those two statements are true, the beginning and the end are both perfect squares. And if you take those factors, put them together and double it, if it gives you the middle, you're done. Okay? Then you have to do... ACB, in this case, it would be ACB, right? Because that's there's a value in front of there, okay? So let's just take this answer for a moment. I'm just going to move it over here off to the side. We're, almost, we're saying that's our final answer, right? If I had to ACB this, what two numbers am I multiplying together? What's 81 times 25? A lot. <laughs> what is it? Somebody with a calculator. 81 times 25 is a B. What is it? 2025. All right. Well, let's let the moaning and groaning begin. I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to 2025 20, that add to 90. Oh, sweet pearl. 2025 is a year after we graduate high school. Here's to hoping. All right. 2025. 20, 25. Hello. Whoa. How'd she already get that? Yeah, what did she cheat on? Well, I just took out, like, let's, let's have 90. 25. <laughs> okay. So that is not coincidental. These two numbers that make up the middle 45 and 45, they're the same number because that is a perfect square. Okay, so that's not coincidental. Secondly, type this in your calculator. Square root of 2025. 20, Take a wild guess on what you get. 45. 45. Again, not coincidental. Okay. 81 was a perfect square or is a perfect square. 25 is a perfect square. When you take two perfect squares and multiply them together, you get another perfect square. So that 2025 20, is a perfect square as well because it's made up of 45 times 45. Okay. So let's say that all that happened and you still didn't realize what you were looking at. Okay. Then my four parts would look as such. All right. I'm splitting the 90 into the two factors of 45X and 45X. What do you do when you have four parts? You group them. So if I group these, one there, one there, what do 81x squared and 45x share in common? A 9x, leaving behind plus 5. What do 45x and 25 share in common? A 5, leaving behind. Well, dang. What is the thing that they share in common? What's in the, what's their common group? 9x plus 5. And the two items, 9x and 5. Well, isn't that that? Okay. So, if I recognize that the first term and the third term are both perfect squares, and... If I take the factor, the, the square root of each of them, put them together and double it. If it gives me that number, I got it. If it doesn't, what do I have to do? I got to try to ACB it. Okay? So it's a, it's a shortcut. If you recognize it, great. If you don't recognize it, guess what? That, then you got to do the work, right? Could I still get to that answer? Yeah. Yes, I could. Did I need to? No. Okay. So. Looking at this one. Question number one. 
Does it start and finish with a perfect square? Yes. No, yeah. 16x squared? That's a perfect square. 36? No. Yes. Okay. Now, the one that's a little bit more tricky. If you take the square root of the first one and the square root of the last one and multiply them together and then double it, do you get the middle? What do you mean? Because that's a negative. Okay. All right. Now remember, though, if this middle is a negative, look at your look at your packet. If that middle number is a negative, then what am I really going to do with my two pieces? I'm going to put a minus in between of them instead of a plus. Yeah. So does this work? The answer is yes. My answer is going to be what? Four X minus six. Good. So four X minus six squared. Okay. Now, again, if you were going to ACB it, and I'm not going to ACB the whole thing, but here's the beginning of it. If you AC, what is 16 times 36? Use your calculator. What's, what is it? 576. What are the two identical numbers that multiply to 576 but add to negative 48? You know, what is it? 24. Negative 24 and negative 24. Okay. The fact that those numbers are the same tells me that I have a perfect square. Courtney, do you have a question? So if I wanted to, I could. I'd write 16x squared minus 24x minus another 24x plus 36. Group them, factor them, you're going to end up right there with those two factors because it's the same thing twice. And what if you melt the top of the square to put like 16, zero, it would be like that small would be like Uh, If you put what in, I'm sorry? Well, okay, so first of all, like if this first number is a 15, 15 is not a perfect square. So this whole thought process is out, and I got an ACB. Are you trying to tell me that you're going to type every number in and hit the square root to determine whether or not it's a perfect square? No, like if I don't know. So, yes, if it comes out to be a decimal, correct, it is not a perfect square. So that's, that's a valid statement. So what about this? Is that a perfect square trinomial? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, first of all, what's the first thing you got to look at? The first and the third. Is the first one a perfect square? Yeah. Yes. Is the last one? Yeah. Okay. If I take the square root of both of them and double it, do I get 14? Yeah. Well, this one is an X, and this one is a 7. So if you put those together and double it, do you get 14? The answer is yes. So that means you should know what your answer is. X minus 7 squared. Okay. Tonight, when you're looking, all, your only requirement on the, this page in your packet is to finish the questions down below. Okay. If you recognize them to be a perfect square, then what does their factored answer look like? If you recognize them not to be a perfect square, tell me why this one is not a perfect square trinomial. You haven't even looked at it yet. Like, what part of it is not a perfect square? Well, 15 doesn't have to be a perfect square. What's the first requirement? Lillian, what's the first requirement? My first requirement is what? Right there. So my first and third are both perfect squares. Is that true here? Yeah. If I go back to this, is that a perfect square? Yes. It's 64. Yes. Okay, so we're good there. The second requirement. 
take the square root of this one and the square root of that one. So first of all, what do you get when you take the square root of those? A three and a, not a nine, and an eight. Put those together, that's a total of, we're not adding. It's 24. Well, did you write this down? It is two times A times B. Well, then why are you adding? <laughs> so a three and an eight, that's 24, and I got to double that. I'm looking for what number? I'm looking for a negative 48, but I didn't get a negative 48. Well, that's what I would need this to be because the, right? the square root of this one is 3x. The square root of this one is 8. If I put those together, that's 24, but I also have to double it. And I didn't get, so I'm looking for a 48 in the middle, and I don't have a 48. So what method would I have to try if I was going to be able to factor this? So I'd have to try to use ACB. Okay. On your homework, you can just simply say, not a perfect square. All right. So that was number one. Number two is what's on page three. And on, and on page three, the title is the difference. Uh, I'll learn how to spell the difference of two squares. If you would look back in your notes from section 8.4, the difference of two squares looks something like this. A plus B times A minus B. Not that we had two of the exact same thing, but that we had that opposite sign in the middle. What happens when you foil these two things together? Courtney, you remember? Uh huh. Something happens there. So let's foil this real fast. What what happened? What's the beginning? What's F? First. Yeah, but what is it? Oh, a squared. A squared. <laughs> okay. So first is a squared. What's outer? Uh, a B. Negative AB, negative right? It's A times negative. So it's a negative AB. What's inner? So we call it AB. And then L. B times negative B would be minus B squared. So Courtney says that part right there cancels out. And you get left with A squared minus B squared. That's where the name comes from, the difference of two squares. Difference, subtraction of two squares. Both of them are perfect squares. Okay. Now, if we jump over here for a second and we look at your packet, there are three requirements when dots can be used. Do you think you can tell me any of the three requirements that would be needed? The name says the difference of two squares. What's that? A negative, so a minus or subtraction. That is one requirement. That you must have your problem separated by subtraction. You, 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 okay. Has to be what? Has to be. Okay, so you have to have perfect squares in your problem. And there's one more thing that has to be there. The name says the difference of two squares. There's only two what? Two, two what? Two squares, two terms. It has to be a binomial. Good. Any of those things will work. Okay. So when I'm looking at this, it can only have two items. It can only be a binomial. And those two items have to be separated by subtraction, and they both have to be perfect squares. If that's true, your answer will always come out to be A plus B and A minus B. Now, this one's a little bit tougher because if you don't catch it, there's really nothing else you can do. Because a lot of times, 
the difference of two squares won't share something in common. There'll be no greatest common factor. Or if there is a greatest common factor, it really doesn't do anything for you. It's one of those like where you just pull out a coefficient and the exponents haven't changed, and so you haven't done anything. Okay. So there's some here as well that you'll try tonight. Okay, or later. So we're going to look at a couple here. Just a couple and then we'll be done. So let's go to this one first. Is that an example of the difference of two squares? Three requirements on your paper. Requirement number one is what? Binomial. A binomial. Is that a binomial? Okay. What's requirement number two? Does that have subtraction? Okay. Requirement number three. Are they both perfect squares? Are both of those perfect squares? If that's true, then your answer is guaranteed to be two sets separated with an addition and a subtraction of the same two items. A plus B, A minus B. Same two items. What's that? Is it minus sign but you're multiplying these two things. So does it matter which one you write first? It does not. But you absolutely could. All right. Any clue what's going to go into this first spot right here? Because whatever that is, has got to be exactly the same as that. A what? A 10x. Very good. Because 10x times 10x is what gives you the 100x squared. What's going to go in that second spot? Destiny? A 2y. Very good. Because a positive 2y times a negative 2y gives you that negative 4y squared. And we don't have to worry about the outers and the inners because it's the same two items but positive and negative. What's going to happen to those? They're going to cancel each other out. And so all we're going to have is the f which is that one there, and the L, which is that one there. Okay? Is this the difference of two squares? Yeah. Yeah. No. Yes. Well, what are the requirements? Uh, binomial. A binomial. So, yes. So, yes. Are both of those perfect squares? No. 25 is, but remember, it's the power. If the power is odd, we can't split it. We can, what What can we do for 25? What two numbers? Five and five, right? That's five times five. Okay, so what am I writing in those two sets? Yeah, so in the first spot, right? X squared and X squared. And then the last spot? Not X. Okay, 5y to the third, and over here, a 5y to the third, and what's going in between them? Okay, does it matter? Okay, so one gets a plus, one gets a minus. Okay? All right, last one. Don't even need to answer it. Tell me why this is, where are you at? There you go, sorry. Tell me why that is not the difference of two squares. Courtney? Good. This power of five right here cannot be split which means it's not the difference of two squares. So if you were going to factor it, you have to do something else. It's only got two terms. So what else could you do? Uh, can't ACB because I don't have an A and a C and a B. I only got two things. I don't have three. So that's called the what? Okay. Is there a greatest common factor? A four. Is that lower exponents at all? So is it really helpful? No. So I'd have to think of some other way that I could deal with that in order to do it. Okay. Yeah. All right. So tonight, just the questions that are at the bottom of those two pages shouldn't take you more than like five minutes. Okay. Remember answers to these can be used then as a, as a guide while you take your test. So it's really important that you do it. The very last page in the back has not been completed yet. We're going to do that tomorrow in class. All right. And then we are done with this chapter.